trading is a mechanic in Manor Lords that you can go a long time without using, and consequently it can be a bit tough to figure out. Let's go over the different kinds of trading, the best ways to use it, and a few tips to help you get started. The two kinds of trading you can take advantage of are trading between regions that you own, and trading with outside forces. We'll go over trading between your own regions first. To trade with another region that you own, you need to construct a pack station, which allows you to set up a barter connection, a pop-up in which you can set parameters for your bartering. This can be a really useful way to get a new region up to speed by sharing resources from a wealthier one. Unfortunately, there's a catch. Since you're bartering, the values of the resources have to match. When selecting what each region gives to the other, a multiplier will appear underneath, telling you how many of one resource is needed to receive another in return. This way you can't just send half your resources from a rich region to a poor one to give them a huge boost early on. Your new region needs to already be producing something in enough quantity to get something in return. This doesn't have to be just one rich region helping out a poor one, however. Some regions are just built for different things. If you have one region with abundant mining opportunities but little wildlife, you can trade some of that clay for meat. If one region has great fertile soil but all your people are tied up working the land, you can trade away some of your excess crop yield in exchange for other raw resources you may not have time to collect. Take a hard look at what you have trouble producing in one region and how your neighboring regions can help fill that gap. You can also assign mules to your pack stations to increase how many items you can trade per trip. The other type of trading in Manor Lords is with outside forces, such as trade points and traveling merchants. The two types of buildings you need for this kind of trading are either trading posts or livestock trading posts, and the currency used is your regional wealth, the money on the left side, not your treasury, the money you obtain from taxes on the right. The livestock trading post allows you to both export and import oxen, mules, horses, sheep, and lambs, while the regular trading post lets you trade everything else, from raw resources to commodities. After building one of these trading posts, you set your desired surplus, a surplus is how many of each animal or item you're not currently using, and whether you're exporting or importing to get to that point. Obviously you can't export more than you have, so if you're exporting, your desired surplus must be less than your current surplus. And the opposite is true. When importing, set your desired surplus to be higher than the amount you currently have, or trading won't do anything unless you're just setting it up if you go under that number later. You can also set the particular animal or item to full trade, meaning you'll import or export to meet whatever surplus you currently have without having to switch back and forth when it goes up and down. Keep in mind that when you start, importing costs 10 more regional wealth than you get for exporting the same item. So imports should really be used as a last option after bartering when none of your regions are able to easily acquire something, as that extra cost can really add up quickly. If, however, you end up with way more of a resource than you need, setting up a trading post to export excess goods is a great way to get passive income to come to your region, and since you can set the minimum surplus amount, you have a safeguard against accidentally selling vital resources that you'll otherwise need. The extra hitch that comes into play with trading posts are that some items require specific trade routes to actually trade, called major trades in your trading post pop-up. Trade routes can be bought individually for each item you trade on the right side of the trade window, and will designate a specific merchant to only go back and forth to trade that item. And while these trade routes are required for items under the Major Trade section, they can be set for any item that you trade often if you want to keep the product flowing. You can also spend development points to make your trading more efficient. Trade logistics will cap the one-time amount you spend on setting trade routes at 25 regional wealth, and better deals will decrease the import fee by 10, making it cost the same as exports, and making trade as a means to gather resources much more viable. If you want to heavily focus on trade, grabbing these development points is vital. There will probably be more development points affecting trade in the future, but since Manor Lords is still in early access, these are the most important ones currently available. And that's our quick beginner guide to trading in Manor Lords. Keep in mind that it's still in early access and stuff is bound to change. So if you want to keep up with the latest updates, make sure you check out our guide on IGN.com. And while you're here, check out our guide to growing your population. For everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN. <laughs>